Imagine if you lost your sense of taste or smell, or even your appetite, how would your life change? For many patients suffering from cancer, stroke, brain injuries, and more, this reduction in their quality of life is a reality. Spearheaded by UK healthcare neuropsychologist, Dr. Dan Hahn, this year's International Society of Neurogastronomy Symposium brought together neuroscientists, chefs, and food scientists for the first time to share their individual expertise exploring the concept of brain and behavior in the context of food. First of all, it was a success. Uh, I think everybody had a lot of fun and it was enlightening to see so many different uh, fields and uh, disciplines come together. And uh, what I hope to achieve is that this continues and proliferates. I'm here today because uh, I work in the restaurant business and my daughter is a neuroscience student and this seemed like an amazing way for us to kind of, both of us learn a little more about each other's areas and just kind of put the restaurant business and neuroscience all together in one big package. I'm studying neuroscience uh, right now as an undergrad. Um, have no idea what I want to do with that. Um, so med school is an option, grad school is definitely an option. Um, I definitely have a kind of passion for food. Um, so I started baking when I was younger. Um, my dad's an awesome cook, so he kind of got me into that. Um, so I definitely have a passion for food and being able to combine those, I didn't really know was an option um, until I kind of heard of the uh, International Sci Society for Neurogastronomy. The day-long symposium was filled with TED Talk style presentations from renowned speakers from all over the globe offering up scientific and culinary knowledge in addition to personal stories of how an illness affected a loved one's ability to enjoy food. The presentations were punctuated by breaks for special food tastings designed to show attendees how each of the five senses affects an individual's perception of taste. So at my booth, it's a sensory deprivation table. And when folks come up, we're going to offer them a blindfold or the opportunity to keep their eyes closed and they're going to pinch their nose so they don't smell, and then we're going to give them a small tasting spoon of a pureed food item. So then they try and figure out what they have in their mouth when they can't smell it or see it. Oh, it's fascinating. Uh, just seeing everything other than what you generally consider taste that goes into how you experience food, uh, from the visual to the, especially the smell of the food. It's just been amazing to see when you cut that out how differently you perceive everything that you're tasting. The main sense you got when you used it when your nose was plugged was just texture. And that was kind of all I was working with. And the second you kind of unplugged your nose, even after you'd swallowed, after everything um, was kind of what you thought was gone from your mouth, um, you could suddenly taste things that you hadn't been able to taste before. It's really exciting to see folks put foods that they have in their house right now or that they eat every single day you know, in their mouth and they're just, they're confused. They don't know what they're tasting because they can't see it or smell it. There really is a cognitive link to eating and tasting is just amazing. And such a simple, what seems like a simple exercise can show so much of the science behind something we take for granted like taste. The day was capped off by crowning the winners of the Applied Neurogastronomy Challenge. Chefs Fred Moran and Jahangir Mehta led teams of food scientists and neuroscientists to create dishes based on the taste profiles of the judges, two cancer patients who had both experienced the loss of taste and appetite that often accompanies chemotherapy treatments. Um, the, the judges, uh, do you have the final verdict? If you do, uh, please let us know and then tell us uh, what you like about each of the dishes. Potato soup wins. <laughs> Ultimately, Dr. Hahn says the event achieved exactly what they had hoped, collaboration between many different disciplines. Uh, everybody came together and, um, no pun intended, it really organically grew into something very amazing because uh, we could learn so much from each other from such randomly different fields of disciplines, uh, but our commonality unites us, is, which is 
Um, better food, better flavor, and better health and quality of life.